Hi everybody, thank you for joining me for your Friday workout, your yoga and stretch workout. This is one of my favorite ones to share because it feels really good on my body and I hope it feels really good on yours. It's a nice stress relieving and kind of stretchy, stabilizing, grounding workout. And so it's a nice way to round out the other workouts you may have been doing this week with me or on your own. Um, and it's just a really nice way to, to relieve some stress. And as I always say, kind of take your mind off of uh, what's going on right now. So as usual, I'm gonna recommend that you grab, um, if you have them, two yoga blocks. And that's gonna help bring the floor to your hands, especially if your hamstrings are back, um, are both or one or the other is very tight. So if you're one of the lucky people who are naturally flexible or mobile and you can get your hands down to the ground very easily, then you, there's a chance you might not need the yoga blocks as a prop, but you can also substitute something sturdy like a big thick book um, for the yoga blocks. Nobody has phone books lying around anymore, but that's something that can sort of substitute for the thickness and the sturdiness of a yoga block. So if you have two phone books lying around by any chance, grab those as a sub. Um, and then also a yoga strap. You could also just use a towel, okay? So this is just to help you sort of access the stretches that we'll do at the end of the workout today. And if you'd like to invest in either of those things, yoga blocks or yoga strap, email me and I'll send you the link to my favorites and the ones that I have. Um, and then also, of course, you'll need a yoga mat or a mat or a soft sort of stable surface on which you can sit, lie down, or stand. And if you need something to elevate your head when you're lying on your back for neck tension, I suggest, as usual, just a little folded up towel, okay? And then, what else? I think that's it for today. We're gonna start in a seated position like we have been all week for the workouts. So I do recommend that if, again, if you're tight in the back, hips, hamstrings, you have trouble sitting on the ground in like a cross-legged position, or there's any strain, pain, or discomfort when you do that, I highly recommend propping yourself up, your seat up, on some folded up blankets, folded up towels, some cushions or pillows, okay? So whatever you have lying around, and I'll show you that when we begin for our warm up and our breathing. We're gonna do some breathing exercises to begin. And um, I, I just wanted to introduce this because we haven't done it before. Um, the CDC is recommending, and a lot of doctors around the world are recommending right now to prevent um, COVID-19 from sort of um, adhering its way into your lungs to keep your lungs really healthy and to boost your immune system to do breathing exercises. And yoga has been teaching breathing exercises as a part of healthy lifestyle and healthy mind and longevity, as well as Ayurveda as well, um, for thousands of years. So I wanna do just a modified breathing exercise with you guys today, and I wanted to introduce that in my, in my intro, just so you know, because it's a little different from what we've been doing over the last two weeks. So thank you so much for listening to this intro. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for all of your support over the last several weeks. This is the end of week three of the at home workout video series. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your support. It means so much to me. I'm so grateful. I'm so honored to be even just a small part of your life right now to help you relieve stress, get your mind off of current events and stay healthy. I hope you enjoy the workout. I enjoyed putting it together. I enjoy presenting these workouts. They're keeping me in shape as well. Thank you again, everybody. Hope to see you soon. Hi, everybody. If you made it through my exceptionally long intro today, you'll know that we're gonna begin with some seated breathing exercises. And this is to help increase the capacity of your lungs, the health of your lungs, and to help prevent disease from adhering to your lungs. So super important. And the other important part of this is that you are in a seated, neutral uh, position. So if you'll look at my posture from the side, this is what you want to feel or sort of see on your own body is that you're upright, your knees are relaxed, and you shouldn't feel any tension around the hip, knees, or back area. If you do, or if you feel like you're slumped back or your knees are quite lifted off the ground, then we need to elevate you, okay? So I have two just stacked up yoga blankets here. You can use blankets, pillows, cushions, or folded up towels that you have around. And you're going to put those under your seat. And this can often bring someone who feels like they're here to here, okay? So please, please pay attention to how you feel here. Um, the breathing and the benefits of the breathing are often lost 
when we're focused on the tension that's in our bodies, okay? So make sure you begin in a tension-free position. And that goes for all of our um, exercises, all right? So if you're having trouble with that, feel free to email me and we can figure it out together. All right. So again, find that comfortable seat. You should feel like your sit bones are right underneath you and your spine is nice and long. Shoulders back and relaxed and then the ears back over the shoulders. So it feels like your head is stacked right over your spine, right over your hips. Hands can just rest gently on your knees. We're gonna be doing what's called Sama Vritti or same fluctuation. It just means an even count in as you inhale and an even count out as you exhale. And we're also gonna add retention. One of the breathing exercises that's being recommended worldwide is um, something that's been practiced in yoga for thousands of years is a breath with some retention. It just means you hold your breath. That's gonna be the same count as the inhale and the same count as the exhale. Everything for four counts. Now we're gonna do five rounds. The other thing that's being recommended is that after that last inhale and hold, that last retention, and that'll be our fifth retention, that you cough instead of exhale, that you forcefully cough, okay? So that's what I'm gonna cue you to do. I won't be doing the breathing with you, I'm gonna be cueing the breathing for you, okay? And then I'll, I'll help you keep count. So remember on that last one, and I'll remind you, forcefully cough, and that's gonna help clear out and expectorate the lungs. All right, you with me? Let's do it. I find that it's helpful to close the eyes so that you can really focus inward and focus on the breath. But if you need to maybe just shade your eyelids or soften your gaze so that you're not really looking at anything in particular, that is often helpful as well if you don't feel comfortable closing your eyes for whatever reason. All right, so go ahead and just exhale, let it out. And then we'll inhale one, two, three, four, and then hold your breath, one, two, three, four. Now exhale completely, one, two, three, four. Second round, inhale, one, two, three, four. It's a full breath, hold it, one, two, three, four. Now let it out completely, four, three, get it all out, two, one, third round, inhale, one, completely, two, three, four, hold it, retain, one, two, three, four, exhale completely, one, two, three, four, fourth round, inhale, one, two, three, really full, four, hold it, one, two, three, Four. Exhale completely. One, two, three, four. Last round. Inhale. One, completely. Two, three, four. Hold it. Four, three. Get ready to cough and cough. Exhale. Forcefully cough. Let it out. Very good. Okay. And then once you've kind of finished coughing, Close your eyes again or shade them or soften your gaze. And just take a deep breath in here with me. And a complete breath out. Good. Now, if you didn't inhale and exhale through the nose, if you were exhaling through the mouth perhaps, I would recommend going back and doing this again through the nose only, okay? Nose, nose only. So if you didn't do it the first time, Go ahead, do this exercise one more time, just rewind me, and do this only through the nose. It's much more effective. Um, and I didn't mention it the first time because I just kind of wanted you to feel it out. Um, didn't want you to overthink it. But do go back and try it just through the nose if you can, okay? Much more efficient oxygen exchange happening that way. All right. So let's do one more breathing exercise. You're going to inhale, lift your right arm up, Exhale, side stretch over. This is similar to what we did in our Pilates workouts. Now what I'm gonna have you do differently is you're gonna reach forward and stretch both arms out. And if I had a surface underneath me, my hands would be resting on it. And then we're gonna circle around to the other side. So now the left arm is up. We're gonna stay there to breathe in. 
and then exhale to come back to center. And then let's do the left arm up first this time. Inhale, exhale, side stretch over. This is really stretching out the ribs and the lungs. And then circle around. And now you're stretching out your back and your hips. Both arms forward, head is down, neck is relaxed. Sweep around to the left again. And now the right arm is up. Inhale, stay there. Exhale, come all the way back to center. And now the right arm up again. Inhale, exhale, side stretch over to the left. Circle around, bring both arms forward with you. Drop your head, neck is relaxed, feel your back and hips stretch. And then circle around to the right now. So the left arm is up. Inhale, stay there. And exhale to come back to start. And then last time here, inhale, lift the left arm back up again. Exhale, stretch over to the right. And then slowly circle it around, round over the legs. Head is dropped, both arms reaching out a little further. Fold a little farther. And then reach over to the right, right arm is up, to the left, right arm is up. Inhale, stay there. And then exhale, come back to center. Great job, you guys. We're gonna begin in child's pose here. <laughs> The mailman is here and Stewie is barking, sorry. So you're gonna come into a child's pose. Hey Stewie. Knees open, big toes together, and you're gonna press your seat back to your heels. Now if this is really tough for the knees, just bring the hips where the knees allow. If you need more padding under the knees, put blankets, towels, or even some pillows under your knees. Your elbows can be resting down here, head drops, neck is relaxed as well, or you can reach the arms forward and push yourself back a little further into this pose. And then again, let the head drop and let's take three breaths in together. Try to only breathe through the nose if possible. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, two, exhale, Inhale, three, exhale. And then let's inhale, come on to all fours. So very important that we align you properly when you're on all fours. Spread the fingers wide away from one another. Commit your index fingers, uh, index finger knuckles to staying down on the mat. What happens is we like to roll our hands out and then all of a sudden we're straining through the whole arm line up to the neck. So if you keep that index finger knuckle committed to staying down, it really does prevent a lot of potential injury and then tension. So knees right under the hips and I wanna find a neutral spine. Shoulders glide away from the ears. I have a little dip in my lower back and I'm drawing my abs away from the floor to support that. And then we'll inhale to stay here, preparing for cat cow. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, scoop the abdominals in, press into the hands and drop the head for a cat stretch. Inhale, lengthen through neutral and then come into cow stretch by lifting the tailbone slightly, reaching the heart forward and slightly arching the back. And then exhale, round into your cat stretch again for four. Inhale, lengthen through neutral into your cow, that slight extension of the spine or arching of the back. Exhale, round, scoop and tuck, drop the head, push into the hands gently. Inhale, lengthen into your cow. And again, exhale, round up into your cat, press into the hands, drop the head. Inhale, lengthen through neutral, and then pass neutral into extension. Glide the shoulders away from the ears one more time cow or cat excuse me exhale round up scoop tuck drop the head and then inhale lengthen into that cow shine the heart forward glide the shoulders off the ears and then come into neutral keep the knees together this time and press back into child's pose or shell stretch allow your elbows to drop allow your head to drop we'll just take a little break off of your wrists there take a deep breath in and exhale, notice the difference in how the stretch feels with the knees together as opposed to how we did it earlier with the knees apart. One more deep breath in here. And exhale. And then here's the opportunity you'll have to use your yoga blocks if you'd like them. So we'll place them in front of us. And we're going to be coming back on to all fours. Now this is the highest height for your yoga blocks. This is medium, this is low. Okay, so you have three options there. I'm gonna stick with the medium version here. And then hands down again, commit the index finger knuckles to staying together and knees right under the hips. 
So we're gonna inhale, shift forward, exhale, shift back. And I just want to sort of warm up the knees here. Inhale, shift forward, exhale, shift back, and try to keep neutral. Inhale, shift forward, three. Exhale back, warming up the wrists as well. Inhale, two. Exhale, one more inhale and exhale and then come back over the wrist now here's where you might want to place the hands on the blocks and you're going to step the right foot forward in between the hands or the blocks and then we'll slide this left knee way back i want to feel like i'm more on my thigh than my actual kneecap i'm a little above the kneecap okay because i want to feel this hip and extension it's open in the front to feel a stretch in the front of the thighs or the front of the left back thigh so i'm going to push the hips forward lift the heart and roll the shoulders off the chest and then from here you can either place the right hand on the thigh to get a little deeper stretch make sure the right knee isn't going past the right toes adjust your feet further apart if that's the case and then if you'd like you can liberate this left hand place it on the left thigh and then for uh, a fuller expression of the pose, you're welcome to reach the arms up, glide the shoulders down, and either look forward or look slightly up to challenge your balance. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale wherever you are. One more deep breath in. And exhale to lower the hands to the blocks or the ground. And let's switch sides. So right knee goes back, left foot steps forward between the hands or the blocks if your hands are on blocks. And then slide that right knee back a little further so you're, excuse me, less on the kneecap, more on the thigh. Press the hips forward, roll the shoulders back, keep that left knee behind the toes. And then if you'd like, you have different arm variations you're welcome to try. If not, you just keep the hands right here. Left hand can go on the thigh to lift the heart a little further and push the hips forward a little further. Right hand can liberate itself from the floor or the block and press into the left thigh as well. Or you can lift the arms up, glide the shoulders down and keep the gaze either forward or lift the eyes up to challenge the balance. Stay here to breathe in. Again, feeling that stretch through the front of the back thigh. Exhale. And then one more inhale and exhale to lower the hands down. Great job, you guys. Bring the knee back, left knee back to meet the right, and then either knees together or apart for another child's pose. You're welcome to keep the hands on the blocks if they're here. As you drop the chest down and the hands are elevated, you'll feel a deeper stretch through the shoulder joint. And take a deep breath in, exhale, and one more deep breath in and exhale so from your child's pose you're going to be coming all the way up onto your knees and you don't have to turn i've just turned to face you so i can show you the next exercise properly so we'll roll you all the way up onto the knees and then you're going to take your right foot and step it over let me get these blocks out of the way and step it over to the side okay so it's fully extended now my toes aren't turned up they're turned forward so it's like i've inverted my foot and i'm trying to flatten it onto the mat here now this is an opportunity again to use your yoga blocks and grab one just in case you'd like it you guys if you're, if you're flexible you might not need this but i want to give you the opportunity to place the block down so your hand can come down into a little side bend here so i have a straight line from the fingertips all the way through the leg and foot here okay so if you're a little more bendy you can place the hand down all the way on the mat and so we're just stretching out the ribs enhancing the capacity of the lower lung, lower lobes of your lungs for better health so let's breathe in deeply here inhale for five exhale good if you'd like a challenge lift this leg up inhale four exhale good inhale three exhale this is a modified half moon inhale two exhale also called artha chandrasana inhale last time and exhale go ahead and lower the leg press yourself back up and we'll do it all on the other side. So we'll bring the knees together, and then this time step the left foot over to the side, turn the toes forward so your heel and outside of the foot are reaching down for the ground, and then either use a block or just reach the hand down for the ground. 
reach that top arm up and over so you have a straight line from the fingertips all the way through that foot and five breaths here to increase that lung capacity inhale exhale five good if you'd like a challenge lift that leg inhale exhale four inhale exhale three good working the waist here inhale especially if you lift this leg exhale two one more deep breath in and exhale lower the foot press up and then bring the arms down bring the knees together lovely and then we'll press back into shell stretch again take a deep breath in and exhale inhale to come on to the hands and the knees again and i apologize i keep saying shell stretch that's pilates speak for child's pose or balasana from yoga so i have to put my yoga hat on today we're going to take the blocks again if you choose to use them and place them under the hands and we're coming into that lunge again this time we're going to go to a high lunge a standing lunge anjane asana right foot steps forward left knee slides back just like we did before this time however tuck your back toes under roll the shoulders down and back now if you need to you can place maybe the finger pads on the blocks to get up a little higher if you feel comfortable taking the hands off the blocks to rise to stand go ahead and place them on your hips and lift the chest up but you can always keep the hands down and this is what it would look like if you came to high lunge you'd come here and then eventually you'd walk yourself back up to here if you'd like a greater challenge take the hands off the blocks place them on the hips press down into the feet inhale to rise to stand back leg is straight front knee is bent wherever you are so hands here here or on the hips make sure the front knee isn't going past the toes much more stamina required here straighten the back leg reach back through the back heel and kind of pull the forward heel underneath you to engage your hamstrings the back of this front thigh for a greater challenge, inhale, lift the arms up, and wherever you are in this pose, hands here, 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 or here, breathe three times in, exhale, inhale two, lift the heart, exhale, gently tuck the tailbone under slightly, inhale three, exhale, and then straighten the front leg, place the back heel down, and turn the back foot so that it is now perpendicular, to your front heel okay so front foot faces the side and then back foot is turned in so that your back arch bisects your front heel back arch bisects the front heel this is triangle pose or trikonasana another nice side stretching exercise so we'll straighten the legs pull up on the kneecaps feel like you're getting energy from the ground up inhale lift the arms to about shoulder level and then over that front leg whose toes are pointed out this way you're going to stretch out and over and then gently bring that hand down to either the shin the ankle a yoga block on the outside of the leg or you can place the hand down on the ground on the outside of that leg so arms are staying in line with one another fingertip to fingertip and again use that yoga block if you need it even place it on the highest height for help here okay so feel that length happening in the side of the body and then really ground the outside edge of that back foot and take three deep breaths in here inhale exhale one draw the navel in open the front of the hips inhale you can look up to challenge the balance or just keep the eyes fixed on a focal point two inhale one more breath and exhale very nice intense leg stretch here you're going to fold your torso over this front leg maybe grab both of your yoga blocks or place both of your hands on your shin ankle or the ground and then i want you to take this back leg the one that's turned to the side the one whose back arch is bisecting that front heel and you're going to turn that back foot forward so now both sets of toes are facing the same direction okay everybody's facing the same direction but they're on two tracks so one foot the back foot is staggered over to the side from the front foot both legs are straight now take that back foot and step it in a little further okay so maybe you just have like two yoga block lengths between your feet 
And then I want you to lengthen your heart forward and then fold, exhale over this front leg to stretch out your hamstring. Good. Now maybe your back, hips, hamstrings, any of those or all of the above are tight. Take your yoga blocks and turn them onto the higher height so you can lift up and out and feel like you can get a little more space between your abdomen and your thigh. And then you can fold over. So inhale for three. Exhale, press through that back heel. Inhale for two, straighten both legs. My front knee is bending a little. Exhale. One more time, inhale, lengthen the spine and exhale to fold over. Very nice. Now remember which foot is forward because we have to get the other foot forward next time, okay? So what all I'm gonna have you do is keep the hands either on the floor or on your blocks, okay? And then you're gonna step the right foot back to meet the left, lower the knees down, and press into that child's pose again with the hands down, elbows in, or hands on blocks, knees together or apart. Either way you do it, drop your head and relax your neck. Two breaths here, inhale, Exhale completely. Good, feel the back of your ribs expand now. Inhale and exhale. Beautiful work, you guys. All right, so we're coming back onto the hands and the knees or the hands on the blocks and the knees and you'll step the left foot forward this time or the other foot forward. Glide the right knee back. Good, press the hips forward and then hands either on blocks here or here or maybe on the ground tuck the back toes under. And then if you'd like to go ahead and straighten the back leg first. Okay, we're in that low lunge on Janayasana. And if you'd like to take the hands onto the body, thigh or hips, um, feel free. Or keep the hands on the blocks for a little bit. Okay, and gradually make your way up there. And then when you're ready, come upright, press the hip down, pull the heel forward, and then lift the arms up if you feel like this is okay for you here, that you're stable. Take a deep breath in, look up if you'd like to challenge your balance. Exhale, let's do two more breaths together, you guys. Inhale in our high lunge. Exhale, one more deep breath in. And exhale, very nice. Lower the arms, straighten the front leg, and then turn the back foot so that the back arch bisects the front heel. Legs are fairly wide here in our triangle pose, trikonasana on the other side. Lift the arms up to shoulder level and you're gonna reach forward, hinging from the hip joint kind of sideways and then windmill the arms so that hand meets the shin, the ankle, the floor on the outside of the foot or the block on the outside of the foot. Okay, outside of the leg. And if you need a higher height, please adjust accordingly to give you some space to lengthen your spine so you don't feel like you're hunched over. That top arm is in line with the bottom arm. The chest and hips are opening in the direction you are facing, the direction your back toes are pointing. Take a deep breath in here and exhale for three. Inhale, lengthen out through the crown of your head and the tailbone. Exhale, two. One more inhale and exhale. Beautiful. And now fold both arms down to the ground over this front leg for intense leg stretch here. Parjvatonasana. You're going to take the back foot and turn it forward. So now all ten toes are facing the same direction. You'll feel a stretch through the back um, calf and through the front hamstring, back of the front thigh. Now do me a favor, walk your hands or your blocks forward, and then step the back foot in a little bit. Okay, so maybe again, you've got those two yoga blocks lengths, length between your feet. And then straighten both legs, pick up your tailbone, lift your tailbone up away from the ground, lengthen your heart forward, inhale, and then exhale, fold forward over that front straight leg. Blocks under the hands, or simply the floor under the hands. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, three. You guys are doing great. Inhale, two. Exhale. And inhale one more time. And exhale, 
Wonderful, we're coming back down again. So hands either on the floor or on your blocks. Put the weight in the hands to step your left foot back to meet your right and lower the knees down for another child's pose. Balasana knees can be open. I'm gonna open mine this time and sit back. I'm gonna keep my hands on the blocks to drop my chest down and I'm feeling some extensioning happening in the shoulder joint. I feel a deeper stretch here, but if this is inappropriate for your shoulders, simply rest the hands on the floor or bring your elbows in. Drop your head. Let's all take a deep breath in together. And exhale. Inhale to roll up. All right, we're gonna stretch out the glutes and the hips here with Agni Stambhasana, or a fire log pose. So I'm gonna to turn to the side to show you what this looks like. Actually, I'm gonna stay facing forward to show you the full expression of the pose, and then I'll turn to the side to show you some modifications. The full expression of the pose, one leg is down in a half cross-legged position. The other leg stacks on top. Now you are trying to get the right foot over the left knee and the left knee over the right foot, okay? So that you have your, your calves are like fire logs stacked one on top of the other. This is pretty intense for a lot of us, okay? And the knees might not permit this. Again, are you back here? Are you slumped over? You might need to prop yourself up on something and that might give you access to this pose, okay, that you didn't have before. So make sure you're using your props. They are our friends. All right, so if this isn't working for you, I'm gonna show you from the side. All I'm gonna do, well, let me show you from the front first. I keep the top foot on top and I just extend the bottom leg, okay? So I'm just taking this leg on top, this um, foot on top of the opposite thigh and bringing it in, okay? So that's an option. I'm gonna show it to you from the side so I have some leg support. So you guys decide if you're gonna do the modification, which leg is on top first, okay? And you can slide it down or up depending on your comfort level. All right, so wherever you are in this Agni Stambhasana or half Agni Stambhasana, Arta Agni Stambhasana, you're gonna lift the heart up, inhale, grow tall. And then I want you to try to fold from the hip joint over. And what you'll inevitably feel is if you have a tight back, you're gonna feel this in your lower back. If you have tight hips or um, if you have hips at all, you're gonna feel this here, a little stretch, okay? So if you're in that full Agni Stambhasana, you will mostly feel this in the top hip, okay? Mostly in the leg that's on top, the fire log that's on top. And so wherever you are, inhale to lift your heart for five and then exhale, fold over. So what I'm asking you to do on the inhale is lengthen. Inhale, lengthen. You can even use your hands to kind of pull your heart forward, glide your shoulders down. Exhale, fold a little bit. Okay, good, three more. Inhale, lengthen the heart. It's an active stretch. Exhale, fold forward a little further. Two more, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. One more deep breath in and exhale. Good, now wherever you are, stay. One more breath, inhale, exhale, and then inhale to stack all the way up. All right, we have to do the other side. So we're gonna stack the other leg on top. So you have the opposite fire log on top. Or if you're doing the modification, the Arta Agni Stambhasana, the half Agni Stambhasana, you'll take the other foot on top of the opposite thigh. Now this knee isn't going down, it's staying up. And then you can slide the foot down a little bit if you need to, to kind of get it out of the way of your quadricep muscle if that's uncomfortable. Just make sure it's not on your kneecap, okay? And so wherever you are, find those sit bones. If you're here, this is not the place you wanna to be to start forward folding because it just goes all into your lumbar spine. So I need you to prop yourself up on something to get here. You gotta be upright no matter how many blankets or, or um, blocks underneath you or towels underneath you it takes, get yourself to a place where you can be in neutral tension free, okay? Even if it means you have to sit on a chair and rest this leg down on the floor, okay? Inhale to lengthen and then exhale to fold over. Okay, again, inhale, lengthen the heart forward, glide the shoulders down, exhale, try and fold from the waist. You might not be going very far. For those of you who are in full, you're gonna feel it on the opposite hip now. Inhale for four, exhale, fold, good. Inhale, lengthen out through the heart, exhale, three. Inhale, lengthen, two, exhale, a little deeper, good. One more, inhale, lengthen, that's our active stretch. Exhale to fold, now stay here to breathe in. 
Feel that stretch, be with it, exhale. And then inhale to roll yourself back up. Great job, you guys. We're gonna remain in a seated position for a forward fold over straight legs, okay? And you'll need to, again, prop yourself up if you feel like you are here, okay? So we'll get you nice and propped up. In fact, I'm gonna prop myself up too. You know, my hamstrings are pretty long. My lower back is, um, it's got a lot of lordosis or curve in it, right? But I find this is just more accessible for me as well when I sit up a little bit. It does take a little bit of pressure off my hips. So experiment with that, even if you're super limber and know that you're in neutral without any props. Same concept. I want you to flex your feet, pull up on your kneecaps to energize the legs. And what I mean by same concept is an inhale to lengthen, and then an exhale to fold forward from the hips. And if you're back here without any props, when you fold forward, you're not folding forward from the hips, you're folding forward from your spine and putting a lot of pressure on your vertebrae. So you wanna get upright before everything, before anything happens. Inhale again to lengthen, exhale to fold forward. We're gonna hold this a little longer. So hands can, it's not about where your hands go, okay? It's how far um, forward your heart goes. So your hands can rest anywhere, as long as your shoulders and neck are tension free. For those of you who are a lot more flexible, you can take yoga blocks and put them against the soles of your feet and hold on to those, right? If you need a little more oomph. Um, or you can reach your peace sign fingers and wrap them around the inside of your big toes to give you a little more leverage. Or again, just rest the hands wherever your shoulders and neck are tension free. So again, we're holding this a little longer. Good, take a deep breath in and exhale. We're gonna hold for five more breaths from here. So you've already been holding it probably for at least five or six. Inhale, lengthen the heart forward. Exhale, fold from the hips. Inhale four, this pose is called Paschimottanasana. Exhale in Sanskrit. Inhale, lengthen three. Exhale, fold. Good, shoulders and neck tension free. Inhale, shine the heart forward too. Remember, it's how far forward the heart. Exhale, can go. One more deep breath in to lengthen. And then exhale, this stretch is so good for your back, your hamstrings, those places where we get very tight. And then inhale to rise all the way to seated. And exhale, beautiful job, you guys. So we're almost done. And we're gonna remove anything that's underneath your seat. Move any props out of your way. After this next move, we'll, get, we'll, we'll be rolling down onto your back and lying on your back for our final, um, final stretches. So you might consider grabbing a folded up towel and your uh, yoga strap or the towel you're gonna use to help you with your stretches um, right now to have them, have them nearby, okay? So boat pose. We're gonna balance behind the sit bones. This is just like a teaser from Pilates. So much of Pilates is based on yoga, so you see a lot of overlap. So we balance behind the sit bones for Navasana, lean back, boat pose. And then this might be as far as you go. You could liberate the arms here if you want a little extra challenge. You wanna be leaning back far enough that it's actually challenging. So if you're up here, no big deal, right? So lean back. And then if you'd like an, a further challenge, balance and core challenge, lift one leg up to tabletop and then lift the other to meet it. Keep the chest lifted. Good, take a deep breath in here for five. Exhale, draw the navel in. Inhale, lengthen the heart. Exhale to draw the navel in. Three more here, see if you can squeeze your inner thighs together. Inhale, exhale, good, two more breaths. You guys are done after this, inhale. Exhale, at least done with all the hard work. One more deep breath in. And exhale, place the feet down, extend the legs out, and then roll yourself down vertebra by vertebra until your head is down and possibly resting on a support. All right, one of my favorite parts, grab your yoga strap or your towel. If you have a yoga strap, you can make a loop on one end of it. Go ahead and bend both knees for just a moment. And then you're gonna put the yoga strap or towel around the ball of your right foot. 
okay? So the ball of the foot, not the arch of the instep, a little higher than that. And then you're gonna straighten the right leg out. Now, your right leg might not be straightened up to the ceiling. It might be straightened up here, okay? Depending on your hamstring length. Just wherever you can get the knee straight is where you wanna be. And then you can either keep this left knee bent or stretch it all the way out and flex that foot. If that compromises your hamstring stretch by any means, bend the knee again, no problem, okay? So you'll pull that leg in a little more deeply for an active hamstring stretch here. We'll point and flex the foot a couple times. Circle the foot around in one direction and around in the other. You gotta give yourself a little slack to do that. Let up on the, the rope strap or uh, towel a little bit and then bring it in a little closer. Take a deep breath in here and a deep breath out. Good. For an inner thigh or adductor stretch, we're gonna let the leg drop open to the side. Now I do like to, if your knee is bent here, I do like to extend the leg out. You're gonna open that right leg, rest your right elbow down on the mat or surface on which you're resting and keep the opposite hip, the left hip down. So if that left hip is coming up, if your left shoulder's coming up, if your body's rotating quite a bit, lift that leg up a little bit, fix it. Take a deep breath in here, feel that inner thigh stretch. Exhale, pull that foot a little closer toward your head. Maybe not closer to the floor, but closer to your head. Take a deep breath in here, and exhale. Good, inhale, come through center, and then we're gonna come to half happy baby. So you're gonna bend the knee to the outside of the body, okay, toward the underarm. Foot stays stacked on top, and then you can pull down through that foot so the knee comes down closer to the floor on the outside of the body. You can bend this knee to give you, you some more access to this stretch so you don't feel like you're straining this left hip, okay? Either one works. I might bend my knee here. My left hip feels a little bit compromised. And then if you wanna do the full expression of the pose, you can take the right hand and wrap it around the outside of the right foot with the right elbow on the inside of the right knee. And then you just pull that knee down even further. Take a deep breath in. Try and ground the tailbone down. Exhale, good. And then inhale to lengthen back up. Now I want you to stretch that left leg out. And then you're gonna drop this um, right leg, the top leg over to the side. And you're gonna feel a stretch through the IT band here, okay? If you turn, I'm gonna move over so you can see so I can get a little deeper into this. So you're gonna drop it over a little further. Turn the toes down to the floor and the kneecap down, and you're gonna feel a stretch through that IT band. You might not need to go um, very far to feel this. I could probably drop my foot a little further over if I didn't have a wall in place. And you wanna try and keep the shoulder down here on the other side. Take a deep breath in here, but I still feel it, even though I haven't gone very far into that twist. And it's not a twist that we're really trying to do, it's just an IT band stretch here, okay? Take a deep, deep breath in one more time. And exhale, come back to center, good. And then we'll switch to the other side. So again, we'll place that yoga strap or loop the towel around the left ball of the foot now, ball of the foot as opposed to the arch or the instep. And then straighten that left leg up, flex the foot, Make sure the knee is actually straight. If this is quite a struggle, keep this other foot or the other leg, the right leg bent. If not, you can stretch it out and flex the foot and then bring that leg in a little more closely, but keep the knee straight, keep the hip down and point and flex a few times here. Good, circle the foot around in one direction, giving yourself enough slack with your hands on the rope or towel to do it. Circle both directions, good, and then bring it in a little closer. Take another deep breath in, feeling the back of the thigh or hamstrings here, and probably the calf as well. Exhale. And now open that leg to the side. So again, extend that right leg out and flatten it on the ground as much as you can to anchor yourself as you drop this leg over. And I'm gonna drop my elbow down, my left elbow down, and take up the slack on my rope or towel, strap or towel with the right hand. As I drop the leg open, feel the inner thigh stretch, and then kind of pull the foot toward the head keeping this opposite hip and leg down. Keep the opposite shoulder down. If it's coming up, lift that leg up a little bit and anchor that opposite shoulder onto the mat. Take a deep breath in here. And exhale, get a little deeper into it. One more time, inhale. And exhale, good. Now inhale, come back to center. Half happy baby, Ardha Ananda Balasana. Bring the bent left knee to the outside of the body. 
either keep the foot stacked on top of the knee and pull down with the strap, or you can loop the left hand on the outside of the left foot and put the left elbow on the inside of the left knee. I'm gonna bend my knee a little bit here, but you can keep the leg straight certainly if it feels like a better stretch for you, you can access that. But um, I just don't like to strain my hip flexors, so I'm gonna bend it a little bit. Pull that knee down, take a deep breath in and see if you can ground your tailbone as you keep this foot stacked on top. Make sure your foot doesn't drop down here. It's not the same stretch at all. <laughs> Good. And then go ahead and stretch that leg back up. And you're, I'm gonna move over a little just so I can get into the stretch better. And what you'll do is straighten that right leg out and cross the left leg over the body, rotate the knee and toes downward or inward, and you're gonna feel a stretch to the IT band. So again, it's not like a traditional yoga twist that we're going for, it's an IT band stretch, a long line of the leg and fascia stretch. Take a deep breath in here, try and keep the shoulder down. Exhale, inhale, maybe let it drop a little further if you can and exhale good inhale comes back to center and then we'll remove that strap or towel put all your props to the side but please feel free to leave something under your head for neck support and then stretch the legs out nice and long find a comfortable position here in our final resting pose corpse pose or shavasana the pose of shiva and allow your head to be heavy. Allow the eyes to close. If that's uncomfortable, feel free to shade them or just soften your gaze. Allow your shoulders and neck to relax. Let go of any tension. Allow the arms to grow heavy. Allow the back of the ribs to grow heavy and the chest and abdomen to soften. Take a deep breath in. And a complete breath out. Release any tension in the hips and pelvic region thighs and knees, calves and feet. Scan the body and wherever you find remaining tension, let it go. And now take a deep breath in. And a complete breath out. Wiggle the fingers and toes. Circle the wrists and ankles. Slowly turn the head side to side. Gently bend the knees and ground your feet back into the earth. Gently hug the knees into the chest. Feel free to circle the knees around in one direction and around in the other direction to give your back and your hips, your hip joints, a little massage. And then instead of just popping right up and sort of negating all of those nervous system restorative effects we've created, let's do this slowly and roll onto one side first. You're welcome to fold the bottom arm under your head, bend the knees and toward the chest, and just rest here for a moment, like you're in the fetal position, about to fall asleep. Take a deep breath in again, and a complete breath out again. Good. Use the top hand to press yourself up to seated. Find a comfortable seat, and maybe that means you prop yourself up again on something. Props are our friends. And then find your sit bones underneath your pelvis. 
Lengthen your spine on the pelvis. Bring the ears back over the shoulders. Relax the shoulders. And then gently rest the hands on your thighs, knees, or in your lap, wherever you're comfortable. Take one more deep breath in with me. And out. And then bring the hands into this mudra, the seal of gratitude for your time, taking the time today to take care of yourself, to practice a little bit of healthy breathing. Feel free to use that breath anytime. They're recommending you do it several times a day. Um, that modification that I showed you, or you can increase the breath count and the retention count if you'd like. And please stay well, please continue to take care of yourself, and please feel free to give me any feedback via email that you wish, or if you'd have any questions for me about props, alignment, exercises, or anything at all, I'm available for you. Thank you so much, everyone. Stewie wanted to make one final guest appearance this week, and he says, I send my love, send treats, and be well. Thank you, guys.